Greetings again. Uh, I'm Lewis Little, and we'd like to continue our discussion of the elementary wave theory. Uh, in this video, I'd like to turn to the subject of special relativity. The elementary wave theory actually predicts special relativity and explains why it's true. Uh, it doesn't contradict it. I'm not going to offer you a, a refutation by any means. What, what I'm offering is an explanation of why it's true. The basic physical fact underlying relativity is the fact that light travels at the same velocity relative to any observer regardless of that observer's state of motion relative to the source of the light. Everyone always sees the same velocity of light. Einstein took that fact, he didn't explain it, he took it as the basis for his theory and deduced mathematically what this would imply about space and time, at least the mathematics of space and time. Um, his derivation is imp impeccable, I agree with it 100%, but I very much disagree with the physical interpretation usually placed on it. Um, currently, uh, his equ equations are interpreted as applying to uh, some sort of reified space. By reified, what I mean is one takes a, a concept, which is really a concept you form in your, in your head, and turn it into some real object, which it isn't. Uh, space is, is uh, conceptual. Uh, it's not a percept that, that uh, is something real in and of itself out there. Um, it's, it's purely a concept. Currently, uh, his equations are interpreted as applying to uh, some sort of reified space, as if space and time are a real thing that shrinks and e expands and time goes at different rates and so forth. And um, it's, it's the space and time as such as some sort of real thing that changes. Uh, to me, this has a lot of problems with it. One never sees any space as such. One only sees objects that move around in space. Perhaps the, the worst thing about the current interpretation is um, if I, instead of standing here, I instead walk across the room, suddenly the fact of my motion makes every object in the entire universe to its furthest reaches change size and shape at least relative to me. Of course, it doesn't change relative to other people, so objects end up being different, in fact, depending on who's looking at them, which also makes no sense. Um, if everything in the whole universe changes size and shape just because I move, I mean, talk about a non-local theory. It, it's it's non-local in the extreme. Now, I submit the elementary theory provides a very simple direct explanation as to this basic physical fact, why the speed of light is the same relative to all observers. Consider a simple case of uh, uh, somebody looking at some object. Now, of course, the light signal that you see comes from the object and travels to the eye. That's what you see. And uh, that consists of the particle photons. That's what carries the signal you see. But as with all other particles in the elementary wave theory, these particle photons follow a wave that's coming from the eye and going the other way. Um, I'll discuss the situation for seeing very, very far distant objects in a moment, but for anything in a local area, when you see a photon in your eye, that photon has followed a wave that's coming from the eye. And it's the wave that determines how the photon moves. In particular, the wave determines the velocity of that photon. So the very speed is determined relative to the frame of reference of the observer. If an observer is moving, the wave coming from that other observer will be different, and the photon will follow um, that wave accordingly, still with velocity c. The fact that the photons travel at a speed determined by the ultimate observer um, explains this basic physical fact. Now, 
What does this say about space and time? We form our concept of space by seeing real objects that can move around and take each other's place. We don't see space, we see things. And we infer the space. It's really a concept. It's not a percept. But the way we perceive space is visually primarily. We see light. We use light to determine where things are and at what time. Uh, we look and we see a thing in a particular place. We maybe can correct for the time it took the light to get to our eye, but that's how we determine the place and time of any event. So this nature of light dependent on a wave from the observer is built right into our very concept of space and time in the first place. There's no way to get around that. Uh, this doesn't mean that space and time is reified. It's still a concept. Um, but, but it's going to affect how we see any physical process, which is why we need to use Lorentz transformations and processes uh, depending on how we are moving relative to the, the phenomena in question. So the elementary wave theory explains why this basic fact is true and therefore explains relativity. If Einstein had not come up with relativity theory as yet, the elementary wave theory would have predicted it. And I submit this is the best single proof that the elementary wave theory is correct. It doesn't, the elementary wave theory doesn't simply account for quantum phenomena, but the theory that explains the quantum phenomena simultaneously explains relativity theory which we had thought was an entirely different phenomena. So it explains things other than exactly what you were trying to explain with it. And I submit this is the best evidence of all, that it's the correct theory. Relativity and quantum mechanics, you might say, are really one and the same theory. It, it's the fact of the reverse motion of the waves that accounts for the weirdness and all the other phenomena in quantum mechanics and relativity theory which is why it is that when physicists took a non-relativistic quantum mechanics and made it relativistic, they got all kinds of new results coming out. Well, the elementary wave theory, if you will, is automatically relativistic. It's relativistic by its very nature from the beginning. And one needn't go through any process of relativizing a non-relativistic theory. It's already done for one. And in uh, later videos I'll describe how this leads directly to a relativistic particle physics without the additional 500 plus pages that one needs to relativize quantum mechanics in current theories. Basically in the end one can reduce the elementary wave theory to 20 or 30 pages instead of the thousand pages that it takes to present quantum mechanics. One tends to think of space as being something like the space in a room. You have a room and it's here and then different objects can be placed in the room. When you're talking about the space in the universe, however, uh, there is no room. There are just objects. And when, you, when you're developing knowledge, you want your knowledge you want to be able to identify the percepts on which your knowledge is based. We don't perceive space. We perceive objects. We see that they can move around and take each other's place, which gives us the concept of space. And you might say the space has to be there before objects can move around. But um, the space itself is not a percept. It's not a, a substance of some kind. It, it's something you come to as a result of seeing real objects. And it's an error to reify this space, to treat it as if it were something physical in and of itself. In, in the room, we wouldn't think of the space as a stuff of some kind. Uh, it would just be the space in the room where things could be placed. This was basically, you might say, Newton's notion of space or absolute space, as uh, it's sometimes referred to. 
where um, um, there are specific locations in that space that are the same regardless of who's looking at them and, and so on, which we know now is not the case. Einstein's equations show that we will see different spaces depending on how we're moving. But um, again, this doesn't mean that this space is some kind of real stuff that is changed by our state of motion. The, the space is a concept and our concept of space changes because the appearance of things changes due to this effect on the light. And physicists uh, today uh, think of relativity as implying that when one walks across the room, everything in the universe changes. But according to the elementary wave theory, the only thing that changes is the light. No object changes. They all stay the same size, the same shape. They look different. Their appearance is different because the light is different, not because space and time has changed or because the objects have changed. Relativity uh, appears to say, and it's currently interpreted as saying, that objects are one length when they're stationary, but are a shorter length when they're moving at a rapid speed relative to an observer. Um, that's not the case. The object stays the same size. The appearance changes because the light being used is affected, affected by your motion relative to the object. The same with time. Uh, relativity seems to imply that time intervals change so that clocks go more slowly when they're moving at a high velocity. Uh, the velocity of the clock has not changed. All again that's changed is the light. Another phenomenon related to uh, this time dilation uh, and changes in lengths is the idea that simultaneity is relative. That two events that are simultaneous to one observer will not be to another observer. Well, the fact is that if you're, if you're in the same frame of reference as the two events and they're simultaneous there, they're going to appear to be non-simultaneous to someone moving relative to those events. But it's not as if the, the, the time difference has physically changed. Again, it's only the appearance that changes.